Welcome to LifeWords Day by Day, where we've been discussing from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the distinctive roles of men and women, particularly husbands and wives, and what that looks like within the church. So we've been talking about men, but now we're gonna to transition to the women, where we see that the duty of every woman is to honor Christ by recognizing her distinction as a woman. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse four says this, every man who prays or prophesies with his head covered dishonors his head. But every woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head. It's the same as if her head were shaven. For if a woman will not cover her head, then she should cut her hair short. But since it's disgraceful for a wife to cut off her hair or shave her head, let her cover her head. First, let's discuss the covering. What type of covering was it? Was it a hat? Was it a veil that covered the face and head like we see Middle Eastern Muslim women wear? Was it a shawl worn on top of the head? Was it just their hair stacked on top or was, was it hanging down? What exactly was it? Well, here are the two major views. The first view is that what is being discussed here is hair piled up in a bun on top of the head or braided and stacked around and on top of the head. So a woman's long hair was fixed neatly and then pulled off the neck on top of the head in some kind of fashion. That's one viewpoint. And here are some reasons to legitimately consider that viewpoint. Veils that covered the face and head were not worn in the first century Jewish life for everyday women. Also, in the Greek, Roman, and Jewish culture, to wear your hair loose or disheveled or even cut off meant that you had been cut off or shamed by the community because of adultery. Exposing long hair of a woman was a sensual thing and was meant to be seen by your husband and him alone. This is why in the Song of Solomon, the woman lets down her hair for her newly wedded husband on their wedding night. Here's view number two, is that it was simply a covering placed on top of the head. The verb used for covering in its most common usage refers to an actual covering. Philo, who was a contemporary with Paul, uses the same terminology in removing a piece of cloth from the head. Plutarch, also a con contemporary, speaks of the head being covered with part of a toga. So you can decide for yourself. But the important question is, what's the purpose of the head covering? What is clear to us in this passage is that there was a way for a man to express himself within corporate worship that identified himself as a man. And there was a way for a woman to identify herself as a woman. And that identification declared that the man knew he was a man and was taking on his responsibilities as a man. And that the woman knew she was a woman and was gladly taking on her responsibilities as a woman under the divine design. The cultural expression of that identification was the head covering. Today, when you pray, please pray for Reginald Acuna and his family, our changemaker missionaries in Paraguay. And also remember the Kinga LifeWord broadcast that's heard in Tanzania.